Three, two. What is up, everybody? Metal Rail Fan Mike here. Rock and roll. So I'm going live for a little bit. Well, a little bit. And what I'm going to do, hit that bell, hit that like button, and subscribe, folks. Anyway, what we're going to do today, I'm going to go through all my music CDs and some of my musical tastes. I'm going to talk about the bands that influenced me throughout the years. I'm going to I'm going to give a big shout out to one of uh, one of the channels I watch. I'm going to give a couple shout outs. Shout out to Metal Ben's Chronicles, Rock On Dude. Shout out to Ryan Arnold, Rock On Dude. And let and also shout out to one of the other um, metal channels. It kind of influenced me to start my metal co collect, metal collection. And it's a channel by the name of um, Cover Killer Nation. You should check Mark out. He's awesome. He's an awesome content creator. So, we're going to go through my CDs and my, some of my DVD, some of my live DVDs I have. And then I'm going to talk about five or six bands from rock and metal that influenced me that I listen to daily. Alrighty, guys. Here we go. We're gonna start off with the DVDs, and then we'll I'll work with through the CDs. All right. So first DVD I have that's music related is um, ACDC's Live Noble, 1996. This was their Rock mm, Ball Breaker Tour, 1996. Features Angus Young on lead guitar, Malcolm Young on rhythm guitar, Brian Johnson on vocals, Cliff Williams, and Phil Rudd on drums. And, you know, you have Back in Black, Shoot, Chop Down in Flames. You know, your typical ACDC set list. And this was, I think, a three-night show, I believe. And they filmed the first couple nights. I have on Blu-ray, Led Zeppelin's The Song Remains the Same. I think this was either Live, live 73 or 74 at Madison Square Garden. John Bottom does not Excellent drum solo on here. I have this was <laughs> this DVD was cheap. I got this at um I believe I got this at Dollar General for like three bucks, and it was a uh, the midnight special. And DVD performances features Peter Frampton, Tom Petty, the Doobie Brothers, John Denver, Daryl Hall, and John Oates, and more. So yeah. Midnight Special. I think this is Volume 1. So, check out the Midnight Special. And then I have a ECDC Live Stiff Upper Lip. And those are all the um, live concerts I have. Alright, so... Alright, we'll start off with... Um, Alright. We'll start off here. I have... Well, I have... Black Sabbath. Um, technical Ecstasy, Sabotage, Volume 4, Masters of Reality, Paranoid. I'm kind of burnt out on this record. It was my very first, yeah, it was my very first Sabbath record. Kind of burnt out on it. Um, Heaven and Hell, The Devil You Know. Very last album, Ronnie James Dio uh, uh, did vocals on. Um, Black Sabbath, The Dio Years. I have um, Pink Floyd, The Wall, The Double Disc, Ball Breaker. Well, after a video, this is not a bad album. It's not a good ACDC album. It's not a bad album. It's tolerable. It's okay. Um, I have Dirty Deeds Down Under Cheap, but I'm missing the disc. 74 Jailbreak. Power Up. Um, the Slipknot debut album. Houses of the Holy album by Zeppelin. Um, I got Zeppelin 4, got the debut Zeppelin album, 
Led Zeppelin 2, and I have Physical Graffiti. That's that's my first uh, bunch, and then here's all the other CDs I have. We have Power Slave by Iron Maiden. Great album. Best 80s Iron Maiden album. You can tell me wrong otherwise, but I'm correct. This is the best album. Maiden's produced in the 80s. Prove me wrong. <laughs> um, we got Peace of Mind. Took an A album. And then this album got me in. This really, well, this was the very first album I ever got by Maiden. Got me into Maiden was um, The Number of the Beast. Great album. My very first Metallica album, which I still have. And Justice for All. I have uh, Waiting waiting for the Sun by the Doors. My only Kiss. <laughs> I dislike Kiss, but I have one Kiss album. <laughs> and that's their debut album. <laughs> Go figure. The Very Beast of Dio. Uh, who's Next? My favorite Who album. I love this album. Check out the Who. We got, excuse me, I'm sorry. We got Tom Petty's Greatest Hits. We have The Doors debut album. And we have my one and my own real only Deep Purple album I have. It's a little filthy. And it's just the greatest hits of Deep Purple. You know, they're hits. Not much of a Deep Purple person. Never got into them. All right. Those are my CDs I have, guys. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you guys my top five favorite classic rock bands and metal. And these are the bands that kind of molded my musical talent. I also play drums on the side. You can check those videos out on my YouTube channel. Um, all right, let's start with metal. At number five, we're going to go Slipknot. I discovered Slipknot during probably around middle school. That's how I got um, their debut CD. I just love it. It's fast. Joey Jordison's a beast of a drummer. Dude's fast as hell. Um, yeah. What can I say? Always wanted to see him live. But I want to see him live with Joey Jordison on drums. Really don't care for the other drummer much. Um, number four for metal. I'm going to go Judas Priest. And I love Judas Priest. I don't have CDs, but I on Spotify, I have a big playlist of metal. I have all the Judas Priest albums. Oh, my God. They're good. Redeemer of Souls is a really good Judas Priest album. Doesn't get much love. And it's a really good comeback album. Redeemer of Souls. Check that album out. Number, number three for metal-wise, Metallica. I mean, they got me into thrash metal. That was the first band that got me hooked on thrash. Metallica. First album I ever borrowed. Not own. First album I ever borrowed and listened to was the Black Album from a friend of mine. It's an okay album. But, like I said, the very first album I owned and I appreciate by Metallica is Injustice for All. You got killer songs like one um, you know, the, the title track, Injustice for All, just rips. So riff-tasty. So riff-tacular. It is awesome, man. Um, and then second band, metal-wise, I'm going to go Iron Maiden. Power metal. Iron Maiden, I love them more than Metallica. Fucking, fucking Iron Maiden, man. Bruce, he can fucking scream. I really don't care for the Paul Diano era. I don't care for the first two albums. It's not Maiden. It's Maiden, but it's it's missing some. So, eh. And then Blaze Bailey, the two Blaze Bailey albums. I will say this. Um, the X Factor album before Virtual Eleven, that album sucked. X Factor... There's a song I like. It's called Fortunes of War. That song's pretty good and dark. That whole album was dark, but it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, Iron Maiden, check that band out. They're awesome. 
and number one is 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 like a is like is like a number one is one and then the other one's an honorable mention so we're gonna go honorable mention so that's like one and a half so the one and a half honorable mention is overkill there's no bad overkill album the <laughs> first three albums are fantastic the recent material is good overkill has never made a bad album and jason bittner is a fucking kick-ass drummer Dude fucking slays on drums. And Bobby Blitz, oh my god, dude's good. <laughs> he can sing. Um so yeah, check out a check out the band Overkill. They don't have a bad record in their catalog. They don't have a bad song either. And probably the band that got the probably the band that influences my metal, my love for metal is Black Sabbath. Have all the bands. Black Sabbath was my real gateway into metal. To like legit like heavy metal and just good shit. Black Sabbath was that gateway for me. Because you had the Ozzy albums. You had the Ozzy albums. Then you had the Dio albums. Heaven and Hell Mob Rules. Live Evil. They split. And fans were upset. And then you have Ian Gillen come in on Born Again. Great record. Please listen to Born Again. It is a underrated gem. It is a good Sabbath album. Very underrated. Not talked about a lot. You can you can add Seventh Star in there by Tony Iommi, but that doesn't count as a Black Sabbath album to me. It's kind of more of a kind of a Sabbath concept album. It's kind of like a Tony Iommi solo concept album. Didn't work out well. Then you got um, Eternal Idol with Tony Martin. Eh. You got Headless Cross, which is a killer, killer album. Headless Cross. Oh, my God, man. Headless Cross with Cozy Powell on drums and Neil Murray on bass and just Tony Iommi and Tony Martin. Dude, that album is good. And then Dio comes back in 92 with Dehumanizer and the tour, and he leaves... Yeah, check out Black Sabbath. Check out those albums I mentioned. And then we're going to go into my top five, um, Classic Rock. And the rock bands that kind of got me into music. At number five, I'm going to go The Beatles. My very first CD I ever owned as a kid was The Beatles. The greatest hits. You know, greatest hits with the red, with, well, kind of, well, it's a CD, it was the, the, the thing was red and it had the number one on it. That that's the that's the Beatles album I had. And I kind of discovered the Beatles discography after that. And to be fair, I really don't like the Beatles Beatles discography. <laughs> Surprisingly, I prefer George Harrison and Ringo's music more than the Beatles. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, number five is the Beatles. Number four. Hate to bump this band down, but number four is going to be Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin at number four, and oh my god, Zeppelin. What can you say more about Led Zeppelin than John Bonham on drums? Man, the man was kind of a pioneer. You know, you know he had some jazz and influence and stuff, but John Bonham was a good drummer, man. And Led Zeppelin, jeez. If John Bonham had not died that night, Zeppelin... Probably would have made some albums in the 80s. So yeah. At number four is Led Zeppelin. Number three is Pink Floyd. Another band I just love. Always love Pink Floyd. I don't care for the stuff. Pre-Wall. I don't care for. Division Bell and Momentary Lapse of Reason are really the only later albums I like. Of the latter era of Pink Floyd. And the Final Cut's a mess. I mean, even The Wall is a mess of an album. It's a good album, but it's kind of a mess. Dark Side of the Moon was just perfect. Echoes was perfect. Obscured by Clouds was perfect. Even Adam Hart, Mother, and Saucer Fool's Secrets. All those late 60s, early 70s albums, all those experimental Pink Floyd albums, they're all good. Listen to them. You'll just take a trip, man. Um, at number two... It's going to be a band called Uriah Heep. 
And I recently just checked them out and started listening. And oh my god, Demons and Wizards is a fantastic album. And really, that's that's the only album that stands out for me for your heat. You have Lee Curse Lake on drums. Man, Easy Living. Who doesn't love Easy Living? That's a solid, iconic song. And yeah, man. You know, Uriah Heep, they're my second biggest, and probably the biggest influence for me rock-wise. And I have to go ACDC. They were the very first band I ever listened to, besides the Beatles. But the very first band, very first CD I really ever owned was when I was six years old. The album was called If You Want Blood Live and also Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Those were my first two albums and my gateway into Rock music. Saw ACDC live in 2015. The only time I ever saw them. Didn't sound the same without Phil Rudd on drums. Brian Johnson sounded okay. I mean, saw them live was great, but they were kind of disappointing live. I hope to see them live with the current lineup with Phil back. So, we'll see. Alrighty, guys. Well, we're 16 minutes in, and I have a challenge for you guys. Please comment in the comment sections. Give me either your top five metal influences or top five rock influences. And tell me your favorite bands in chat, guys. All right, hit that bell. Hit that subscribe button. Share it on all your social medias. Let's grow this channel in 2021. All righty, guys. Metal! Rock and roll. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace.